Hello world, today's video is the start of a brand new series called Start to Finish. On this channel, I've always provided you guys with a variety of tutorials for FL Studio, but it's always felt like they were more pieces to a puzzle, as opposed to an actual finished puzzle that you guys could take home with yourself and actually feel like you completed something and that your work brought you somewhere. I really like giving you guys different aspects of beat making and making music in general, but I think it's time that I give you a more cohesive course that you can follow through to the very end and actually have a product that you're proud of. The beat that you are hearing right now is the beat that we will be completing in this tutorial, and we will be going start to finish inside of FL Studio starting from scratch. There's a one-shot pack link below, and there will be additional resources every single video to help guide you along the way and provide you with everything you'll need to make this beat. This video is part zero of the series as it's entirely focused on navigating FL Studio. And this video is only necessary if you've never previously made beats on FL Studio. If you already have experience using FL Studio in the basic navigations and functions, then there's no reason to watch this video and you can go ahead and skip to part one. But if this is your first time using FL Studio or you're an extreme beginner, then I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how to navigate and use FL Studio starting with importing the drum pack. So inside of FL Studio, the main way that we are gonna be getting drum packs and files into the project is through the browser. The browser by default is on the left side of the screen here and contains many different files that are already part of FL, including this default packs file here with all the default drums. We could just use that default pack, but instead I'm gonna show you guys how to import packs of your own and obviously we'll need to do that to import the tutorial files that are linked in the description below. Head on into options and then click file settings and that will bring you to this menu here. You won't have as many folders listed. It'll probably just be the default ones that FL has given you. But all you need to do is click this folder button here and then guide yourself to the downloaded file. I would not recommend guiding it to your downloads themselves. I would move it into your image line folder just in case you delete your downloads later or move stuff around so that you still have access to it. So for me, I moved it right into my image line folder and then I created a new section called tutorial files and put it in there and I'm gonna select that folder. And as you see now in the bottom left, Petro One Shot Start to Finish is available for us to use inside of the project. Now that we have the files we need to start, let's go ahead and discuss how to navigate FL Studio. There's tons of tools, icons, and areas to discuss and explore in FL Studio, but I'm gonna mainly just be discussing the ones that we will absolutely need to make this beat, and the other ones will kind of fill themselves in the more that you watch these kinds of tutorials and the more that you learn FL Studio. So we're gonna go ahead and start with this little toolbar here at the very top of the screen. There's four things on this toolbar that are vitally important for navigating FL Studio. That is the playlist button, the piano roll button, the channel rack button, and the mixer button. This view that we are on right now, this is the playlist. The playlist is where all your loops will exist inside of FL Studio. And that's because it's a loop based system. This obviously doesn't have to be the case. We can just drop in a clap sample here and now we're not working with loops. We're actually just working directly inside the playlist. But with our particular example, we are going to be working with loops and that will be our main use of the playlist. Coming off of the playlist, we have the piano roll. The piano roll is where all the actual keys that we will be playing will be typed into FL Studio or played on the keyboard like this. This screen has a variety of different tools and options inside of it, but the main thing that we want to know is this gear icon here in the upper left. This quantitizes whatever we put in the piano roll. If we set it to beat, the quantization is extremely tight. And if we set it to one sixth beat, we have a lot more free range over where we put the notes. And we can even set it to none and then just put it wherever we want. For our example, we can just leave it in half beat and move on to the channel rack. The channel rack lets you navigate through patterns using this box up here, or just by clicking any pattern that you already have inside of the playlist. When you're inside of a pattern, the channel rack allows you to switch between the piano roll view and a drum roll view with this step sequencer button here. In the step sequencer, you can apply your drums and start to make basic loops. And we won't go on to that until probably part two or so of the video, but the channel rack is extremely important for creating loops and melodies in general. Another quick feature inside the piano rack is this velocity button. This allows you to adjust the note pitch, velocity, and a lot of other features of any note that you've already typed into the channel rack and is an extremely useful and important feature inside of FL Studio. 
If you want to add a sound to the channel rack, which we will go ahead and do, there are multiple different ways to do this. You can either navigate right here to your browser and select the previously added one shot pack, go to kicks, grab the kick and just drag it in. And now you have the kick in your channel rack. And no matter what pattern you're in, it's going to keep whatever you have in the channel rack there unless you change it using this category button here, but we will not be messing with that at all as we will not need to use it. You can throw generators like Serum and other VSTs into the channel rack by using this plus button here and just selecting what you want to use and click anywhere inside of here. And if you don't see what you're looking for, you can just click more plugins and it'll give you a more specific list of VSTs that you can grab. Moving on from the channel rack, we have the mixer. The mixer is arguably one of the most important parts of making music. This is where your actual tracks will be mixed. This is where your gain staging occurs, your load order of your VSTs, and the actual mixing of your music. So this is an extremely important part of the process. I'll go ahead and show you how to throw something from the channel rack or an audio file on the playlist into the mixer. All we need to do is click and drag on this number right here, and we can set it to whatever number we want, and that number will correlate with the mixer. So say we put it to 20, which is what I normally do for kicks. Now, every time I play the kick, it's going to come through track 20. And that gives us complete control over the mixer and how to control that kick. Let's say you wanted to add something to the mixer from the playlist. The easiest way to do that would be to double click the audio clip and then just simply assign it here in the track section. Now, every time that's played, it will play in number 11. Now that we have all four of the main navigation areas, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the browser. The browser section not only includes all your folders that you've added and VSTs, sound files, and anything else you might also need, but it also includes a lot of information about your project, which can be extremely important. There is a history section, which shows you all the last actions that you made in FL and allows you to reverse them at any specific point. There's also an effects section to show you all the effects that you have in the mixer, a generator section to show you all the generators on the current project, and a remote control to show you what automations that you have currently. This remote control section can be extremely important because sometimes you set an automation and you don't even recognize that you did and you'll be wondering why certain plugins are acting super weird inside your project file. And that information will be contained here. The plugin, the library, and the starred. You only really need to worry about the starred if you are currently using FL Studio 21, which I do recommend, though 20.9 does really honestly do everything that you need it to. Uh, this new tag feature is extremely useful in the browser and it allows you to tag certain sound files and then just easily find them searching for them. So if I search snare, all the snares will come up. And then if I search tag and use used, only snares that I have tagged as being used will come up. And that's super convenient for me to separate snares and kicks and to easily navigate through them. At any point, if some of these things go missing, like for instance, this browser will go missing. OMG, where did it go? And the whole screen will look ugly. So the easiest way to fix this is just view and make sure you have browser selected. And this can happen with a lot of different windows. So if any of your windows go missing, first things first, head into view and see if you can't fix it. As far as general settings, there's a few things that I do every single time when I first set up FL Studio. And you wanna make sure that you set up your backups for frequently. This means every five minutes and also before risky operations. And a risky operation is something like exporting and I believe even saving presets. It'll save the project before you export in case it crashes during the export. So you'll always have a backed up and saved version of FL. And this is also where you can tell it to save your backups and how many you want. By default, it is 100, and that's plenty for me, so I keep it there, but you can set it to whatever number you would like. We'll get more into the audio device settings and some of the advanced settings in some future tutorials, but for now, this is all that we will need to set it up for navigation. So in order to help us with the navigation a little more, I'm gonna go ahead and set up the drums for part one, and I'll show you how we can do that. Navigate in the browser on over to the drum kit we created. We already got the kick, so first, head over to the clap. Drag the clap in and we are going to set it to number 26. You can set the clap wherever you would like it, but that is where I particularly like it. So what we're going to do now is to make it easier on ourselves, we're going to change the color of our whole drum section. In order to change the color of a track, all you have to do is right click it and click rename color and icon. Instead of doing this for just one track at once, which can be extremely annoying, we are going to highlight this entire section all the way up to 30. We're gonna right click, rename and color, and then we're gonna change them all to blue in the bottom left here. And hit accept. 
Now, these are all blue, so we can easily tell that these are drums. And with our drums, we're gonna set up what's called a drum bus. Bussing is something that's extremely important for sending many audio signals to one spot and processing all of them there together. And it's basically just a routing of signals. To do that in FL, you just select any track and then right click the bottom of another track and route to this track only. And now you have bust this track to this track. And we're gonna go ahead and rename the bus and color it red. And we'll name it drum bus. Now, we routed one drum to the bus, but what if we wanna route all 30? We can hold control again and select and drag all the way to 30. And then when we right click on the bottom and route to this track only, all of them will be routed to that track. And now we have a full drum bus. As we said, we have kick on 20, so I'm gonna go ahead and rename that. And then we have the clap on 26. Now that we have this basic setup, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in the rest of the drums. And the 808 to 10. And we'll also change the color of the 808 to yellow. Now we have a basic drum bus setup and an 808. While we're here, since this is general navigation stuff, I'm just gonna show you how to sidechain in FL Studio, which is basically when you send one signal to another signal without actually duplicating the audio. In this case, we're gonna be sending the kick to the 808, but not the actual audio of the kick, just the signal so that the 808 can respond to it during the sidechaining. To do that, select kick, and then select the bottom of the 808 track and side chain to this track. That'll create a line to the 808 showing you that it is currently being side chained. We'll get into how to actually side chain later. I just wanted to set that up in part zero. So during part one, we just have everything already set up and ready to go. That being said, let's go ahead and do that with some of the instruments as well. Uh, this is a perfect time to show you an easier way to send stuff to the mixer track, though slightly less customizable. You can just select them all with that same control drag method I showed you on the mixer. Before you do this process, you want to make sure one through four are set to zero because by default in FL Studio, they already assign tracks one through four and we want all eight to be our first instruments. But with those emptied and hitting control L, we can see that one through eight are now our instruments. And that's an easy way to do it and also gives us a name so we don't have to worry about naming them ourselves. And we'll go ahead and set those to red. And let's go ahead and bust the melodies as well, just to get that out of the way. So we'll send all eight of these to number nine, route to this track only, and we'll recolor this and name it Melody Bus. Now that we have all the drums and instruments laid into tracks and properly set up, let me show you guys how to navigate through the sampler. The sampler is how one shots are processed in FL Studio. By default, it will use loop points and it will assume that every note is being played in the key of C. In our example, Every one shot I sent is in the key of C because I properly exported them, but you can always check by right clicking and clicking edit in pitch corrector and you can see if it is a C or not. And if it is in C, then it is correctly in key. If it's not, and let's say the instrument says D like so, then you would go here and switch the root note to D just by right clicking it. A couple important features of the sampler is the ability to change the length of the sample, create an envelope to shape the sample, tell the sample to cut itself, which is very important for not having samples play over themselves. We can adjust the legato and porta abilities of the sound, as well as applying some basic effects. What we will be using it for in this tutorial is mainly for shaping our sounds using the envelope. So this will be an extremely important tool in part one as we go about setting up the melodies. Then of course you have the basic play, stop and record button. And we'll get a little bit more into the recording feature around part two or so. But for now, that is all we need to know. Last but not least, this little section here, which is also present in the piano roll as well, gives us a variety of tools to interact with the playlist with. Paint is what we'll be using a variety of the time, which allows us to paint in both patterns and melodies into the piano roll. However, when it comes to the piano roll, I prefer to use draw instead of paint. It's very similar, but it plays the note when you paint it in so you can actually hear it as you go. These other tools we will not necessarily be using, but it's the slip tool, which slides audio left or right without actually sliding the audio file. 
the mute tool, which you can use to mute any audio clips, and the slice tool, which is very important when it comes to slicing clips. With all that out of the way, that's everything we need to head into part one, where we'll start building the melodies and discuss sound theory a little bit, as well as learn a lot more about the sampler, how to control and adjust samples, and how to create melodies in general. Let me know what you guys think of this tutorial series, and I hope this helped. Thank you guys so much for watching. Tune in for part one, which will be dropping soon, and so much love. Peace out. This is in a coop house. It's a